Hi, it's Trisha again. If you were with me a little bit ago, you probably lost the feed. So um, it's so funny because it goes along perfectly with what we're talking about about today. So my name is Trije and this is today's treasure. And so I just want to encourage you to keep your eyes forward, keep your eyes focused. <laughs> and like I said, if you were with me a little bit ago, I was talking about running your race, keeping your eyes forward, not looking at the past. And in the middle of <laughs> the presentation, it went silent. So there was no battery left. So anyway, I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to believe that this time will be even better than the last time. So if you're joining me again, um, this is Trije, and I blog over at A Heart for Wisdom, and I want to bring you today's treasure, and that's to keep pressing on, to face forward, and to do not look back. And so I just want to encourage you, I was thinking about um, what we talked about a little bit on Monday night about letting go of the past, and so... I've been thinking along that same lines just as I've been looking at my own life and, and just all of the different things that I have opportunity to do to, uh, you know, choices that everybody has to make, you know, and things that in my own life, I have been on this uh, just trajectory to, um, I want to win the race. I want to um, hear well done, thou good and faithful servant. And so I was thinking about the Olympics and how runners that run in the Olympics, they, when they train, they change their, the way they eat, they change the way that they uh, do their routines, they change possibly the way that they exercise. Um, there's just all kinds of things that change when they're looking towards four years before they hit the Olympics. And their goal, their eye, is on the prize of standing on that podium with a gold medal around their neck. And in whatever event, however many events that they're doing, their goal is to be on that podium and to have a medal around their neck. And so we may not be running for an Olympic gold medal, but we are running for a prize. And each one of us has a race that we are called to run. Each one of us has a lane that we're called to be in. And so I want to encourage you today to do whatever you can to set yourself up for success, to make whatever changes that you have to make to set yourself up for success. Today, his mercies are new every morning. So when you got up this morning and you were breathing, and as Christine Kane says, there was, you know, no, you got up, you were breathing, and you were, you know, ready to start your day, that is a gift to you, another day of life. And not only is that a gift to you, but it's a gift to those around you. And so maybe you don't feel like your life is a gift. Maybe you don't feel like where you are right now is you know, a good place, but I want to encourage you to press forward, to keep going, to keep running, to keep believing that this day will be one of the best days yet, that this day is the day where things will change, things will happen, that uh, good things will come your way. And so I was thinking about uh, Philippians 3.13, and it says that you need to keep your eyes on the goal before you, straining with every ounce of your being to reach that goal, even if your success demands that you push harder than you've pushed before. The prize will only go to those who push the hardest, so give it your best shot. So I want to encourage you today to give today your best, your 100% be all in. Don't halfway do things today, but do it with the intent that I'm doing it for the joy that's set before me. Maybe the, you know, maybe it's a mundane kind of day. Maybe it's, uh, you know, maybe it's a tough day. Looking outside, <laughs> it's rainy and it's cloudy. And if I let that affect my emotions or I let my emotions affect my outlook, then I may just want to crawl back into bed and just say, forget it. And if I let my emotions, you know, take over, then I would have said, ah, forget it. You know, the last one I tried, I, it died in the middle of it. So I'm just going to leave it and not do it. But I pressed on. And so sometimes we're in the middle of something, we're doing something, we're trying to reach a goal, we're pressing, we're making changes, maybe we're changing our attitude, maybe we're changing our, um, the way we think. 
And those things don't always come easily. You know, when runners are running or they're training for whatever events it is, it's not always easy to train. They don't always feel like doing it. They don't always want to do it. And some days they probably just rather roll over. But the thing that gets them out of bed is knowing that they want to be on that podium at the Olympics, knowing that they are representing their country, that people are looking at them. And so I want to encourage you that there is a great cloud of witnesses watching you, looking at you, that Jesus himself is praying for you. Maybe nobody else is praying for you, but Jesus is praying for you, praying that you succeed, praying that you don't quit, praying that you'll see as he sees, that, he'll, that you'll see yourself as he sees you because he sees you as a winner. And so I was thinking some more just about the um, running your race and how Paul, you know, goes through all the different things that he's been through. He's been through shipwreck. There's times where he despaired of life. There's times that he just wanted to quit. But what kept him going was the fact that he was running a race, that there was a prize at the end of it, and he knew that he was not finished yet. And so I'm going to encourage you that you are not finished yet. God's not done with you yet. You may be in a pit, you may be in a hole, but that's okay because the palace is coming. There is that day of transition, that day where you are on the other side of what it is that you're going through. So I want to encourage you that if you're going through hell, don't stop, don't pitch your tent, don't uh, make a memorial to it, don't make a shrine out of it, keep running. And so Philippians 2.13 says, out of the God's Word translation, it says, Brothers and sisters, I can't consider myself a winner yet. So I want you to know you're not there yet, but you're on your way to somewhere great. You're on your way and actually every day is something great. Every day there's something wonderful to be experienced. So this is what I do. I don't look back. And I want to encourage you today. Don't look back at what's happened. Don't look back at where you failed. Don't keep a running tally of every mistake that you've ever made because even Jesus himself is not keeping a tally of every mistake that you made. God exhausted all of his anger that he had toward anything that you did wrong on Jesus's body when he was on the cross. Therefore, you can stand before God righteous and whole because you don't stand in your own righteousness. It's not your works. It's what Jesus did. Jesus gave you his righteousness. So I want to encourage you that what happened behind, you know, no runner runs a race and runs it backwards. You know, they don't run looking backwards. I've seen races where people have been running and they were ahead and then they looked back to see where the competition was and they lost their momentum or someone passed them. So don't look to the person to the left. Don't look to the person to the right. Don't look at what everybody else is doing. Keep your eyes focused on what God's called you to do. You know, is it a mother? Well, then be an awesome mother. Be all in today. Is it your workplace? Then be all in today. Is it, uh, you know, your working construction or your cleaning toilets or whatever it is that you're doing today? Throw your whole self in it, knowing that you're working as unto the Lord for a prize to hear that well done, good and faithful servant, that Jesus himself is praying for you to have whatever it is that you need today to make it through and to make it through gloriously. And so I was just thinking about how, you know, that when we look back, it opens the door for the enemy to hound us relentlessly with guilt and condemnation and fear. And when we start traveling down that road of looking at the past, the coulda, woulda, shouldas, we lose the momentum. We lose strength to go forward because you can't do two things at one time. You can't go backwards and you can't go forwards at the same time. So you can only focus on one thing. But if we choose to fix our eyes, what's on behind us, then we've choose to we've chosen to fix our eyes on where there is no life. There's no life in the past. You can't resuscitate the past. You can try to jump it. You can try to, you know, put the paddles on it, but it's not coming back to life. You can't make any changes to it. And so therefore faith is now. So in order to have faith, we need to keep moving forward because that's where God is going. God is going forward. He took care of your past. When you asked Jesus to come into your life, to be the Lord of your life, that wiped out your past. It wiped out 
um, you, the negative in your present and your future. And it allowed Christ to be your advocate, to be the person who stands up for you and says, hey, this one's with me. This one has my life. You know, that event that, you know, the enemy keeps hounding you over. Well, Jesus is standing there saying, hey, it's okay. It's covered by my blood. It's gone. So if you listen to him and say what he says, that it's covered by the blood as far as the east is from the west, it's been removed from me. So I'm going forward. That's not me. I'm going forward. And when you do that, then you have set yourself up for victory. So Paul mentioned how, you know, he was running forward. He was not fixing his eyes on what he had. And what he had, you know, really, there were a lot of things that he could say, you know, I was trained by this person. I had this accolade. I had this, you know, thing. There were a lot of things he could have put his stock in. I started this church. I, you know, did these, all of these things, but that wasn't good enough for him because he knew that the best was yet to come. The best was still ahead of him. That even as good as the past might have been, there was something even better if he kept moving forward. So I want to encourage you, if you're going through hell, don't stop. The best is ahead of you. And if you'll keep going, you're going to get to that destination. So then he says in Philippians 2.13, out of the God's Word translation, the rest of that verse says, this is what he, the second thing he does. The first thing he did was forget the past. The second thing he did was he said, I lengthen my stride and I run straight. I want to encourage you that if you're stuck in a pit, don't stay there. Don't let the enemy convince you that you have nothing left to give, that you have nothing to contribute, that you're too much of a failure because Jesus' blood was more than enough to cover whatever situation it is that you're dealing with. Jesus, his righteousness, his love, his ability, his uh, supernatural nature, his natural nature, all of everything that he has now is yours. He said, I give you the keys. I give you authority and dominion. And so we're called to rule and reign in our situations. So don't be, uh, you know, it says not to be surprised by the trials, you know, but that we're to have joy in the midst of the trials. And the joy is not the trial. The joy is what is being produced if I let it out of this trial. The patience, the love, the peace, the um, strength, the encouragement, the testimony. Everybody goes through a test, but some people come out with the monies, and we don't want to do that. We want to come out stronger than when we went in. We want the enemy to go, oh man, I blew it when I did that, you know, and we want to make sure that he suffers the defeat and the loss that Jesus gave him on the cross, and we do that by lengthening our stride running straight and keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus. And so he says, I, I lengthen my stride and I run straight toward the goal to win the prize that God's heavenly call offers in Jesus Christ. There is a prize for you. There is something great for you to do today, something great for you to do tomorrow. The steps that you make today will make tomorrow even better. The choices that you make. Um, I was thinking about how I used, I was, in a place I wasn't very familiar with. And so I had was driving to the city, but I wasn't quite acclimated to my surroundings and I had never been to this place before. And I made a wrong turn. <laughs> and I turned in a really, really bad part of town. And so my choice was to stop, <laughs> to cry. I could have cried, which I did cry. Um, I could have, you know, just thrown a fit, turned the ignition off, and just sat there. Or I could keep going, and I could, you know, trust God for a way of escape, a way out. And I chose to keep going. It didn't mean I didn't cry, because I did cry, because I'm like, I don't know where I am. And, you know, I it was back before GPS was really that good. And I don't even think the GPS knew exactly where I was either. But I got out of it and I got where I was supposed to go. So, you know, there are some times with faith, when we're walking this walk of faith, that we may hit some potholes. We may, you know, have to make some changes. Like I think about sometimes when we drive down to Texas, the route that we take 
in the past couple of years has had some construction, which means we have to do some detours. The lanes are not the same. The one time we actually had to go around, you know, to different place that we hadn't been before, but it put us back on the same road. It just, we had to take a different route. And so there are some times when we're in life where, you know, faith, we're believing and trusting God that he orders our steps, but it doesn't mean that we don't have trouble. It doesn't mean that we don't have trials. It doesn't mean that we don't have tribulation. And even when we do, it doesn't mean that we don't feel the pain and the emotion of those trials, but we keep running our race. We keep going. And so I want to encourage you today that faith doesn't mean the absence of emotion. Faith doesn't mean that you don't feel things, that you don't cry, but faith means that you keep pressing forward. You don't give up. And so I was thinking about how if you think about faith as a city and uh, fear as a city, there are two places with boundaries, with habitations, with um, surrounding areas. You know, faith is surrounded by love, joy, peace, kindness, patience, strength, help, uh, you know, good things. There's good things in that faith city. But fear also has surrounding areas. And fear, its main place, City Hall, is torment. And then you have anger and bitterness and fear and hypocrisy. And there's all these surrounding territories that go with fear. And depending which choice, which route you choose to take, will determine what kind of surroundings you will find yourself in. You know, fear is condemning. It's dark. It's There's not a lot of light. The buildings in the Fearville is, <laughs> they are not good buildings. They're not in good shape. They're in disarray. There's a lot of confusion. But in Faith Town, you know, they their buildings are well kept. Their streets are good. You may have some construction to go to or to go through, but you're going to find yourself in a good place. And so I want to encourage you that the choices that you make today, if you choose to look back, then you're choosing to um, go to that fearville. You're opening the door to that place of torment because most of the time, let's face it, when we're looking back, we're not going, we're not looking at what God did. We're looking at what we did or didn't do. And so if we want to look back, then let's look back at, at, oh, look at what God did. God did this before. He'll do it some more. So I just want to encourage you that you have choices. You can choose to live your life in the past, to try to run your race looking backwards, but you're not going to get very far. Um, the towns that you're going to have to travel through, there's, it's going to be harder to go through life that way. But if you choose to go through life in faith, if you choose to look at things the way that God looks at things, to look at things through the eyes of what Jesus did on the cross, his death, his burial, his resurrection, the fact that he has given you life and life more abundantly, if you choose to look forward towards that, to those, make choices in line with faith, then you're going to find that even though you may have some challenges, even though you may have some bumps in the road and detours to take, the scenery is going to be a whole lot different. The You're going to get through it quicker. You're going to get through things with more strength and you're going to come out stronger on the other side of it than you will if you take the path of fear. You know, faith, there's resistance in faith. You know, you have to resist your feelings. You have to resist the words of others. You have to, you know, press. It's a press to get there. But the end result is much better than if you just take the path of least resistance, which is fear. It just comes naturally. It's easy to do. You don't have to take much effort to fear. <laughs> it's all around us. So it's just uh, one of those things that's comfortable and easy to do. So I want to encourage you not to take that route but to keep pressing on. And so I was thinking about, you know, just running our race and the things that we have to do. And we have to change the way that we eat. In order to live in Faith Town, we're going to have to meditate. We're going to have to talk the word. We're going to have to fill that word inside of us. We're going to have to resist fear. We're going to have to resist the temptation to quit. Because, you know, I could have done that. I could have said, well, you know, I did it once and it didn't work. So I'm just 
kind of forget it and try it a different day. But I said I'm going to press on. I'm going to keep going and I'm going to give the message that I feel is on my heart to give today. And so I just want to encourage you that you can make changes. That the number one change choice that you need to make is to leave yesterday in yesterday. To put all yourself all in today. To believe God for his uh, ability to believe him for strength to believe that when Jesus said he gave you the keys that you really do have power and authority that in your situation you can speak the word and it will be as if Jesus is speaking the word and change will come it may not be immediate because the word is like a seed it has to go into the ground but as you continue speaking as you continue uh, letting that word come out of you telling that situation what it's going to do and what it's not going to do then you will watch as God is able to come in and bring change to your situation and soon you'll find that you were on the path to fear and God totally changed your trajectory and now you're on a good path a path that leads to life and so I was thinking about the scripture that I read in Romans 6 16 and it says don't you realize that you can choose your own master you can choose sin, which comes with death, or else obedience, which comes with acquittal. The one to whom you offer yourself, he will take you and be your master and you will be a slave. So in other words, this verse is saying that we have a choice. We can choose fear or we can choose faith. Whoever we choose, whether it's fear or faith, will determine what cities we go through, will determine the surroundings that we live in. It will determine what the outcome of our life will be. So I just want to encourage you today, choose faith. Even if it looks like there's no hope for your situation to turn around. Joseph was in the prison one day, and the next day he was in the palace. So there is hope for you. Jesus was in the grave, and he rose again, and he's seated at the right hand of the Father so that we can have life and life more abundantly. So you're never stuck wherever you are. And I just want to encourage you that you are victorious, that you have a race to run, but you'll have to choose whether you're gonna look backwards or you're gonna look forwards. You'll have to choose whether you're gonna live in fear or whether you're gonna live in faith. And if you'll choose the way that Jesus has given you the opportunity to choose, if you choose that faith, then you have an advocate, someone who's standing up, praying for you, and opening the door for him to be able to put you on the path that leads you to that life, to that life more abundantly, and that you hear that prize at the end that says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So I encourage you that you are victorious, that you are a treasure, and you have treasure inside of you, and it will come out of you. If you'll choose to put the past behind you once and for all and never revisit it. Um, I was also looking at Rick Renner. He was talking about the past. And so he was saying that basically what we are doing when we're choosing not to look back, if I can find it, it says that it means that we are choosing never to turn around to look at it, meaning the past, and focus on it again. In other words, we're choosing to leave it behind and never revisit it. So that's what I want to encourage you, is to press forward, to leave the past in the past, and today make whatever changes you need to make. Get that word inside of you, let it come out of your mouth, and watch how God puts you on the path to life and to life more abundantly. So thanks for joining me. I hope you have a great, great week. And remember, leave the past behind, press forward to the new, and run your race with all your heart. Have a great day. Bye-bye.